Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Pastor Dan's on the phone. He's got news articles. We're going to talk about them in light of Bible prophecy. Pastor Dan, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Well, I'm so glad to be back, but I hate always dropping in to visit, so to speak, with all this wonderful news that, you know, <laughs> what we call a good... It reminds me of an old TV program. They had a song that went, it's good news week, someone's dropped a bomb somewhere, you know, it's something like that. <laughs> Tuesday morning, I had an appointment with the dentist. This is, you know, where you go in for your uh, teeth cleaning, okay? And, <laughs> the, the, you know, you always start with the chit-chat. Hey, what do you do? You know, uh, you're married, you got kids, all that sort of stuff. You know, the chit-chat. And we had a little chit-chat. And then, of course, it always rolls around to what do you do for a living? And I said, well, I pastor a local church, and I do a nationwide radio program on Bible prophecy. Oh, really? And <laughs> so that was her response. And then I said, I also am president and CEO of an oil company with the goal to go to Israel and find the prophesied oil in Israel. Oh, really? That's very interesting. And then she changed the subject. And then later on, you know, the topic come up again, and she something about Bible prophecy, she, she changed the subject. And then towards the end of the meeting, she says, well, the reason I changed subject is because I just don't want to be depressed. I don't want to hear anything about the end of the world. And, you know, if it starts off with hearing something depressing, then I'm just depressed all day long. And I thought, okay, you know, but the only problem is what is this lady going to do when the real trouble hits? We're not just talking about it, but when the real trouble hits, because those kind of people are not going to be prepared mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and those are the kind of people that will literally jump out the window. They're just going to slash their wrist. They'll put a gun in their mouth because they cannot handle the end days. They have not prepared themselves. They have immersed them. And by the way, pastors do this. It whole churches, absolutely, and I believe it's New Age, they absolutely positively refuse to have anything to do with anything negative. Why, wow, we live in a positive world. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, I'm positive too. Uh, I used to be in that positive attitude business. I don't know if all of you knew this, but for 13 years, before I got into the end time prophecy world, I used to be one of those guys that taught uh, public speaking classes, sales courses, management courses. I went to the local Rotary and downtown clubs like that, and I gave these positive attitude talks. So I'm not a negative person. Okay, I'm not. It's just that I believe the Word of God, and I want to know what is coming, and I want to be prepared. So for those of you that don't want to face the end times, either you face it now and you get prepared, or it will gobble you up when it hits. It is coming. You're not getting out of it. There is a test coming. There is a funnel, and you're in it. And that funnel is going to force you down to one decision. You will take the mark. You will bend the knee. You will swear allegiance to the Antichrist, or you will lose your head. And that's the truth. Back to you, Pastor Dan. I got to bring this in. I, I, not long ago, I watched Mark Blitz, and he was on a, a, a TBN program. And in that program, they had four other so-called Bible prophecy people, and the only one I trusted was Mark. But And there was a, a lady host and a man's host. I cannot think of a woman's host. But the whole roundtable sort of thing was supposed to be talking about how quick, you know, the rapture was coming and blood moons and all that. I think I saw well, that. About, Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, about halfway through, I, I this woman completely blew me away because she says, oh, um, do we always have to talk about gloom and doom, you know? And, yeah. you know, they're talking about Bible prophecy, and here's somebody that represents the, the so-called Christian world, so to speak, and she's saying, well, I don't want to hear about it because it's all gloom and doom, but that's what the program was about. <laughs> Back to you. Well, yeah, I actually, I did see that, too, and they were saying, oh, well, Jesus could come at any minute. He's supposed to be coming in the next four weeks or something, and I just ducked my head. I shook my head. And I thought, that's yeah. silly, guys. It's it's wrong, okay? We we know so many things of the future. But you see, they don't want to listen to the kind of things I have to say. They want to listen to your 501c3 preachers preaching out of an NIV, watered-down, corrupted Bible, telling them that they're going to be sucked in the air before any trouble comes along. You see, the truth is stranger than fiction, okay? In other words, 
the old flesh man that we live in, he likes to believe a lie more than he likes to believe the truth. A, a lie sounds better to the flesh man than the truth. We have to run after truth. We have to seek it. We have to work hard to find the truth. It is hard to find the truth in our world that we live in today. It's hard. If you think I'm lying, you, you, let me give you some questions. You want to test your pastor? You want to find out what he's made of? Go ask him a couple of questions. Are you a 501c3 or is this a real church? Okay, I'd be real interested. You ask Stan at prophecyclub.com. Send me the answer. See what they say. Are you a 501c3 or are you a real church? Do you teach out of the NIV or the King James? Do you believe in a pre-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, or a post-trib rapture? Do you think everybody on the earth is going to have to go through a testing? See, because uh, Revelation says, I counsel of thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. Okay, so they just want to take that verse out of the Bible. Okay, well, here, I've got on my soapbox. We haven't even got to the topic yet. So <laughs> go ahead, Pastor Dan. <laughs> Well, this is topic because, like predominantly through the news, we're we're seeing ISIS, and which will be our first article. But ISIS is testing Christians overseas, chopping their heads off. These Christians are standing for their faith, and the church will not talk about it because it does not fit in with their little scenario of they're going to fly out. How do they explain about the Christians over there being beheaded for their faith when everybody's supposed to fly out because they believe in Jesus? Well, I I, you know, I, I found uh, another verse. I mean, I'm always finding these verses that just bust up people's understanding of so many things. And uh, let me show you this one, guys. Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. Now, these are guys in heaven. Okay, so they're obviously saved. They're obviously Christian. I saw under the altar the souls. Now, look at this. The souls of them that were slain for the word of God. So these are your martyrs. They get the highest crown. They get to be in the presence of Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ, Messiah, for all eternity, he says, Revelation. They were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now listen to what they say. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell upon the earth? Oh, no, 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 Stan. You, you don't understand. That, that's not going to be talking about that Christians are going to be in the tribulation. No, no. See, th that's talking about all the Christians through all eternity. Well, then how come it's in Revelation 6, 9? Because Revelation 6, 9 is only a few verses away from and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? That verse is talking about what they look like the very last days of the last part of the tribulation right next to the seventh trump. Okay, in other words, this is not people that have lived through all the centuries only. This is, for the most part, those people that had their head cut off going through the tribulation. I'm telling you, Judgment is coming to America. Christian blood will be flowing in the streets of America, and you will be tested. Most of the people alive in America today will have the opportunity, if they just live another 10, 20, 30 years, they'll have the opportunity to deny Christ. So there you again, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? In other words, they got killed. And I, if, if I could look into that verse, if I could see those people, I'm going to say 40% of them are Americans. I believe that. I believe 40%. Listen, that's conservative. 40% of those that say, how long will it be until you avenge our blood on those people that cut our heads off, those people that tortured us because we would not take... Let me ask you a question. Uh, you folks out there that have children... If your child were to start starving to death and, and dying of thirst, how long would it be when you start hearing those children cry and say, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry? How long can you go before you would take the mark? Would you be able to say, oh, no, no, we're, God, we're, we're counting on God. We're not going to bend. We're not going to buckle. We're not going in town. We're not going to take that mark. If we die of thirst, if we starve to death, we die of thirst, we starve to death, and we'll be a martyr. Have Let me ask you this. Have you discussed martyrdom with your children? Now, don't answer, okay? Just think about it for just a minute. All you guys listening, have, let me say it again, have you discussed 
martyrdom with your children? Have you sat down with your husband, with your wife, and have you asked yourself the worst question? Dale Carnegie said, always ask yourself what's the worst thing can happen, accept it, and try to improve on it. So have you asked yourself what's the worst thing can happen? Okay. Are you prepared? Will you sit there and watch your baby die from thirst or die from hunger because you're not going to take the mark of the beast? What about when the soldiers come and take your babies from you? Take your brothers and your sisters. Take your mom and dad. Take your friends. Are you willing to resist? Are you willing to give up all for Christ? And by the way, God's not going to understand, okay? <laughs> Don't sit there and think, oh, well, he'll understand. I'd go ahead and take that mark because if I didn't take the mark, he, I would die. He, he'll understand. No, he won't understand. You take that mark, bub, and your name is going to be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life and it will not be written in there again. You take that mark, and you cannot repent from it. You cannot change your mind, and God will not understand. He will not say, oh, well, it's okay. You know, you were really put under the test. Look, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. It didn't say tried on the couch. It didn't say tried on the soft carpet. <laughs> it says tried in the fire. So if you haven't already sat down and, and talked to your children about martyrdom, look, just like that girl at Columbine, are you ready? See, her dad went around giving a talk, and they had just discussed martyrdom just a couple of months before that. So when the other young man picked up the gun, raised it to her head, and said, if you're a Christian, you're dead. Are you a Christian? She didn't deny Christ. He pulled the trigger. Let me tell you. Before the bullet even broke her skin. Look, when you're a, a martyr, one of the things that, that I believe God does is you don't feel the pain. You don't feel the pain because he has already been through the pain for you. He just wants to see if you're willing to give your life for him. Ken Peters in his DVD called I Saw the Tribulation, and you must get this DVD. Go to prophecyclub.com, get the DVD. It was made back in 2000, for crying out loud, 14 years ago, and you will sit there riveted to your TV with your jaw dropped saying, oh my God, how did this guy know this stuff? You'll say that. I promise you, you will catch your mouth dropping open as you watch that DVD, as he tells about how he was in a cave. And every few minutes, the line would move forward. There was people walking up and down the line with clipboards, and they would say, step out of line. We have a nice warm place for you to sleep, dry sheets. We have a shower. We have hot food, water, everything you need. All you have to do is deny him. Step out of line and deny him. But every few minutes, the line would move forward. And as he got closer, he began to see what was happening. He could see the man with the long curved sword. They would put the people up on a table face up. They had these two little boards. They would hold the people's hands out with ropes. And then this big guy with this giant curved scimitar sword like the Masons have would cut off the person's head as their face up. He said, as I was standing in line... Seeing this, he said, I began to shake violently. He said, I began to shake uncontrollably. And he said, I said in my heart, Lord, I don't want to deny you, but I'm so scared. He said, about that time, I felt a hand on my shoulder. He said, I jerked, I turned. He said, and all of a sudden, I knew who it was. And this liquid peace, like warm oil being poured over my head, went all down me. He said, and the shaking stopped. And the man said, don't fear to give what you cannot keep to get what you cannot lose. And he said, I walked up there. No one had to hold me down. I crawled up there. And as that sword was falling down, the millisecond it touched my skin. I never felt pain. He said, the millisecond it touched my skin, I was out of my body. He said, I was looking down on my body with my head cut off and the blood squirting around. He said, but I never felt a thing. You see, brothers and sisters, please, I'm not doing this radio program trying to impress you. I'm not trying to get your money. I'm not trying to sell a DVD. I'm not trying to become famous like a lot of the ministers out there. 
I am trying to tell you the truth. You are in the last generation. Jesus is coming in your lifetime. There's not going to be a pre-trib rapture come to save you. Only your righteousness will protect you. You will have to be tested. And if you don't know your Bible really good, you'll probably lose your salvation. Back to you, Pastor Dan. Strong stuff. Okay, there's lots of things coming to America. Let's start with this. High-level federal law enforcement and intelligence and other sources have confirmed that just a watch that a warning bulletin for an intimate terrorist attack on the border has been issued. Agents across a number of Homeland Security, Justice, and Defense agencies have all been placed on alert and instructed to aggressively work all possible leads and sources concerning this intimate terrorist threat. Specifically, the government sources reveal that the militant group uh, Islamic State of Iraq and Greater Syria, ISIS, is confirmed to now be operating in war as a famously crime-infested narcotics hotbed across from El Paso, Texas. And for those that need a lesson on where that's at, Juarez is right across the river from El Paso, Texas. Having said that, we also have another warning that goes along with it. It is the new ISIS threat. America's electrical grid blackout could kill 9 out of 10 people. Former top government officials who have been warning Washington about the vulnerability of the nation's largely unprotected electrical grid are raising new fears that troops from the jihadist Islamic State are poised to attack the system, leading to a power crisis that could kill millions. Inadequate grid security um, at a porous U.S.-Mexican border and fragile transmission systems make the electrical grid a target for ISIS. Others joining at a press conference later Wednesday drew attention to a potential threat that if just a handful of the nation's high-voltage transformers were knocked out, blackouts would occur across the country. By one estimate, should the power go out and stay out for over a year, nine out of ten Americans would likely perish. A lack of electricity would shut off water systems, impact transportation services, fresh and frozen foods would be impacted, so on and so forth. Pry provided details of recent attacks. Now, this is important. Pry provided details of recent attacks on electrical systems and said that ISIS could easily team with Mexican drug cartels to ravage America. And that's where they're reportedly at MRS with the Mexican drug cartels. That's what I read first. He told Secrets, for example, that the Knights Templar drug gang blacked out the electric grid of the Mexican state of uh, Makoka or something like that in 2013 to provide cover for killing those fighting the drug trade. The Knights Templars and other criminal gangs in Mexico will do anything for money, and ISIS is the richest terrorist organization in, in history, has hundreds of million dollars at its disposal. Actually, it says it has assets up to a billion dollars. So, there are we also, 9-11's coming up, and we're hearing lots of chatter, uh, maybe some attacks in malls and so on and so forth. So, you know, if you don't have to be around large crowds during this 9-11, it wouldn't be mine just to stay at home and be with your family. Back to you, Stan. Well, as I recall, they stole 5 billion dinars. Is that the number? Do you remember that? What it was, it was dinars that at that valued rate were added up to 467 million American dollars, but that no, was no, I think that's four hundred and sixty-seven billion. But the point is, they got a whole lot of money. All right, now guys, let's talk about this next terrorist attack on America. This was a dream that was given to Michael Bolday. I've read it on the air before. It is very powerful. I'm going to try to really read it not too quickly, so you can really follow me. It's called the Eagle and the Serpents. I talked about it in the last program, dated October fifteenth, two thousand four. I'm going to get right to the point. He said, I was dreaming that I was walking through a sparsely wooded forest, and suddenly my attention was drawn to an eagle flying high above the tree line. It was a beautiful sight to behold. As the eagle rode the thermals, flying in slow, lazy arcs across the blue sky, I began to quicken my pace to keep up with the eagle's flight, all the while keeping an eye on it, noticing that it was slowly descending toward the earth. Finally, it came upon a small clearing where there were no trees, just some bushes on the edge of the green, and the eagle had landed in the clearing, and began to look around, not seeming to notice me. As I began to wonder what the relevance of this was, a man dressed in white, that's the angel that would come to Demetri, and now also comes to Michael, 
Hands clasped in front of him appeared beside me and said, Be patient. In due time, you will see the purpose. I was silent as I watched the eagle and was beginning to grow somewhat impatient. When suddenly, it seemed out of nowhere, a brown snake lunged at the eagle and bit down on its left wing. The snake's strike was very quick and very precise. The eagle reacted without delay, clawing and pecking at the snake cutting deep under wounds in its underbelly, trying to defend itself and ward off the serpent. As it seemed, the eagle was winning the battle, which is about right now. In other words, the first attack was 9-11. America has just about won that battle now. Just as it seemed the eagle was winning the battle, and the serpent was retreating, another serpent appeared. This may very well be associated with ISIS and Syria, and I'll tell you why in a second. Another serpent appeared, red and black diagonal stripes covering its body, and without hesitation struck out at the eagle's right wing biting down, refusing to release. After a momentary tug of war, the serpent tore off flesh and feathers, leaving a large wound on the eagle's right wing. Now, notice it had red and black diagonal stripes. So I looked up, and the only flag of the countries in the Middle East that has red and black on the flag is Syria. I believe that that has to do with something to do with Syria unless we have prayed it to another delay. And we believe we prayed to a delay. We don't know exactly how that's going to come to fulfillment yet. Who knows? Maybe we prayed that away. I kind of doubt it. But anyway, the second bite was much worse than the first. And for an instant, the eagle was stunned. Then a serpent, much larger than the previous two, made up of many colors, in other words, many nations, slithered toward the eagle opened its jaws, lunged, taking the whole of the eagle's head in its mouth before biting down. The serpents retreated, and the man who had been standing beside me walked to the eagle, knelt down, picked it up, and held its head in its hands. The look of grief on his face was beyond anything I've seen in my life. Just seeing the look on the man's face broke my heart. The man continued to look down at the eagle with a pained voice and said, The true tragedy is that at any time it could have sought the safety of the above. It could have soared toward the heavens and would have found its protection. This has been revealed to you so that you may know that the first bite, 9-11, has been. The second bite is yet to come, and the third will be America's destruction. I watched for a long time as the man held the eagle in the palms of his hands, the pained expression never leaving his features. I was too stunned to speak or ask any questions. What I had seen seemed so real. The feeling followed me into my waking hours each day. Each time I closed my eyes, I saw the entire scene play before my eyes throughout the day. One thing I felt a need to share with you is that the second bite seemed to come from an unexpected place. Now, listeners, could it be this problem with ISIS, these things that we're reporting on now, could it be that the snake's second bite is about to hit? Back to you, Pastor Dan. Study finds one in three Americans have been implanted with RFID chips, and most of them don't even know it. Tiny RFID chips can be implanted anywhere in the body, including during dental work. Then you just go to the dentist? Scientists at the Wyoming Institute of Technology have determined that a shocking one in three Americans have been implanted with the RFID microchip. In an article published this week, they detail a study of nearly 3,000 individuals in which they identified nearly 1,000 that had been implanted with an RFID chip. Most were unaware that they had been implanted with such a chip. This finding comes among increasing predictions that the RFID chip implantations will become commonplace in the next decade. The lead scientist on the study, John Bruegel, Ph.D., offered the following. We were motivated to perform this study by all of the public interest in RFID implantations implementation and fears that it would be commonplace. As it turns out, in fact, there 
that it is already commonplace. We found out that a shocking high number of Americans are carrying around implants in their body. The overwhelming majority of these individuals were completely unaware that they had been implanted. I hope that the study causes us to take a pause as a society and truly consider ramifications and implications of human RFID implantation. The study looked at both the prevalence of RFID implementation as well as commonplace implementation locations. In addition to commonly known implantation sites such as the back of the hand, they also identified many RFID chips that have been implanted in dental fillings. The function of the chips varied, but the authors of the study indicated that many revealed personal identities, including social security numbers, as well as medical records. The best way to determine if you've been implanted with an RFID chip is to consult a qualified medical professional to administer a full body scan with an RFID reader. Concerned citizens can also attempt a self-scan, but civilian grade scanners are not as sensitive enough to detect the implanted RFID chips. And I saw these chips, Stan. They are, are a lot smaller than what we think of the rice chip. They're, they're much, much smaller. So what do you think about this? Commonplace? Well, again, guys, you, the whole point, what we're looking for here and what we're on guard for is the mark of the beast. As you recall, Revelation verse 16 and 17 says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, receive a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. So we do not want to take any kind of a mark in a right hand or our forehead. Chip, no chip, mark, tattoo, or anything. Which is another thing. I mean, the Old Testament says we are not supposed to put marks in our body, period. That includes tattoos, even if it says Jesus or I love Jesus or something like that. So all of this is showing that we are getting closer and closer to these last days. A day of testing is coming. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Today, we're making three DVDs available for a gift of just $25. The first one by Augusto Perez, End of Times. Topics are the Great Shaking, the Coming Famine, the Glory Cloud, the Coming Attack on the United States, the Great Darkness, the Super Devaluation of the Dollar, the Double Portion Outpouring, and how God will protect His own. Then, the Coming Pole Shift by Lloyd Carpenter. The Bible says that earthquakes will increase and the earth will turn upside down. Lloyd has studied the coming pole shift for over 20 years and he says it is coming. And the topics are the earth's wobble, earthquakes, tsunamis, weather pattern changes, tornadoes, hurricanes, mudslides, floods and droughts, volcanoes, plate tectonics, seafloor spreading, hot spots, melting ice in the ring of fire, subduction zones, the scientific rationale for a pole shift, the Pacific Ocean and plate tectonics. Have earthquakes dramatically increased in the last 10 years? How does the Earth's rotation affect earthquakes? And John Moore in Signs in the Sun, Moon and the Stars gives you a fascinating presentation using biblical, archaeological, scientific, and privileged government information to show you what is beginning to cause these signs in the sun, moon, and the stars. John proves the signs have already begun and will grow in intensity. He was an intelligence analyst for the U.S. Army and now a homicide detective and radio host. He has been investigating earth changes since 2000 and has some startling discoveries. John has proof there is a mystery planet heading toward our solar system, which is causing ice caps to melt, stopping the Gulf Stream, causing tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, extremely hot and cold weather. He says the governments of the world know about it and they're preparing underground survival facilities. Included in this presentation is a classified map showing safe locations. It's the catastrophes in Bible prophecy gift offer. End of times, Augusto Perez. Coming pole shift, Lloyd Carpenter. Signs in the sun, moon, and stars, John Moore. Valued at $90, all available for a gift of just $25. Call 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. That's catastrophes in Bible prophecy gift offer. End of times, coming pole shift, signs in the sun, moon, and stars. All for a gift of $25.